Port Harcourt in the Niger Delta region of southern Nigeria. As a little girl, I had big dreams. I have always wanted to be a beauty queen with positive influence. I had imagined beauty queens as real royalties who lived in castles, in royal palaces, who organized royal banquets, and preside over the states, the Council of State meetings, and more especially, beauty queens have superhero powers that can make things, ugly things beautiful. I don't know how I got to think about that, but I just believe that beauty queens are superheroes that can make ugly things beautiful. I remember those memories when I was about seven years old, when nobody's watching. I will create colorful paper crowns. And I'll place it on my head, elegantly, with a smile on my face. And then I'll work confidently to my mirror. And I usually have paper, paper globes like this. just because I just wanted to feel like the Queen of England. <laughs> and then I will have my mother's old Ankara round about my neck. Because I wanted to feel like a superhero. And then I will work to my mirror, talking and acting that like I'm speaking to a large network of people, just like I'm doing right now. Even if there was no sound in my voice, I don't even know what to say, but I just wanted to say something. But interestingly, I was born on World Peace Day. And I wanted to talk about peace. I love peace. I bring peace. I want to live in peace. And I come in peace. Even if there was no sound in my voice. But at the same time, I did not also want my mom to know that I have started dreaming again about building a career in beauty and pageantry. My mom felt like this is not a profession. And you're just too skinny. Like, do you think you are the kind of people that they have there if you want to be a beauty queen? And then she said, I, have, I had this bulgy eyeballs and that I may just never fit into a pageant queen. Children around my neighborhood actually bullied me. They called me tiny broomstick. Well, that actually made me feel so sad. But I never gave up on the vision and the transformation that I want to make in the pageant industry. But you see, there is this perception that people have about beauty queens and pageantry. Like it's not a profession, it's a hobby. It's something that you just do for a period of time and nobody gets to hear anything about you anymore. Some other people use it as a platform to venture into other things. But to me, it is totally different. Being a beauty queen is a call to specific responsibilities, management, and leadership. It's something that you do for life. It's a profession. It's something that you're passionate about and you must fulfill the mission. Just like we have other professions like becoming a doctor, becoming a lawyer. There is no ex-doctor or ex-lawyer. Once you are a beauty royalty, you are always a beauty royalty, and you must fulfill the mission. So when I was old enough to take decisions on my own, I decided to search and research about pageant industries that are in line with my vision and my thoughts. But guess what? I could not find any. 
then I realized that my visions, my imaginations are totally different from modern day pageant realities. Because modern day pageant realities actually focus on your physique, like you have to be in a certain way for you to participate in pageants. So I decided to create a brand new pageant system for Africa by Africans that will contribute to the social and economic development of the African nations. Hence, my topic for today, beauty beyond the crown. In 2014, I registered for the Miss United Nations pageant, where I emerged as first runner-up South South. But that wasn't the plan. I wanted to be the overall winner so that I can represent Nigeria at the international stage. But that did not happen. So I applied again in 2015. But I still did not make it. I applied again in 2016, and I was later told that the pageant was not going to hold anymore. That actually made me sad because this is what I've always wanted. Well, so I decided to carry out all my charity projects, like the things that I've always wanted to do. I served as a volunteer for several charity organizations, and I also registered my organization that is focused on women and children. I reached out to over 1,235 young girls, especially single mothers, started raising beauty queens and kings, and then over 500 special needs children, which is really very dear to me. These achievements actually attracted the national director of the United Nations pageant here in Nigeria, and they called me up and said, Heather, sir, can you represent us at the international level? Wow, like this is what I've always wanted, but I got it without any competition. So that was how I became the Miss Nigeria United Nations. But it was on one condition. They said they were not going to sponsor me, so I was going to sponsor myself for the international trip. I said, well, yeah, this is what I've always wanted. Then I started working at it. And I applied again in 2016. Well, I did not make it. In 2017, I decided to work more on my charity project. Then I applied again in 2017. I still failed. Then came 2018. When I was about applying, I told some of my friends and family around, and people were like, Havasa, you've been on this journey for over four years. And why don't you just get a real job? Like, you're beautiful. Do something else with your life. Other beauty queens come, rain, and go, and you're still here carrying crown about. Like, what is it about this beauty pageant stuff? And I said, well, it, it was supposed to pull me down. Like, I really felt sad. But when I got home that day, I said to myself, I was going to get this crown. So I printed this crown because then I didn't have it. I printed it and placed it on my vision board. And I spoke to it every day. And I said I was going to, I was going to get this crown, not just getting the crown, because they had, they had the yellow crown, the blue, the green, the black, and the gold crown. But I wanted this crown because of the different colors on it because it represents the nations of the world. So I said I was going to get this crown, not just getting it, but my voice would be heard. Then came in 2019. I did all the preparations and all that. Guess what? In 2019, I applied again, and I won. I was super excited. The pageant started... The pageant actually started on the 1st of November, but I arrived in there on the fourth day of the event, which means I was the last person that got to come. Interestingly, I was the only beauty queen that had full, big photo book of all my projects, meaning that all my failures put together was what gave me an edge over other beauty queens. 
And I had a video documentary about Nigeria, why you should visit Nigeria, the interesting things about Nigeria. And I had also a video documentary of all the charity projects that I've done. And then when it was time for presentation, I gave my best. At that point, I was already tired of all the process. I just wanted to participate. And I was surprised when my name was called Miss Nigeria United Nations as Miss World United Nations. I was super excited. The first thing that came out from my mouth was my voice will be heard. But I did not cry, like the way other beauty queens used to cry when they give them the crown. So that was how I became the first black African woman to win the Miss World United Nations. Over 51 countries that participated from different continents of the world. This experience has given me more insight and I'm ready to shine the light on others. The African Beauty Pageant is a competition, is a healthy competition that is focused on mentoring, building, and identifying the unique beauty, culture, diversity in each individual that empowers young women and girls with the right skills, knowledge, leadership for legendary service to humanity. Now, this is the African pageant system that we want, where we will not be judged by our skin color or our hair, our status, our age, or our eyes, where we will be free to express our real originality and not neglecting ourselves from not being ourselves. So I said, being a beauty queen is a call to responsibility. And that responsibility is what you are supposed to carry out throughout your reign. Like I said, reigning is not just one year thing. It's something that you do for life. I'd like to say to everyone here today, if you have a dream, if you have an aspiration, if you have something that you really want to do, never, never give up on yourself. Never give up on your dream. There is more to what you are aspiring to be. And that is the beginning of you expressing your real self. And I'd like to encourage every, every aspiring beauty queens and kings at all level and age to brace up, step out without fear, and embrace yourself. Break the pageant stereotype and reign in dignity and respect for yourself, for your family, and for the African nations. May I humbly announce to you, instead of beauty queen, we say beauty royalty. Thank you.